What is up everyone? Thank you for tuning into this video. Hopefully I'm going to get the engine out of this and rebuilt. Turns out it does have low compression. I did a compression test. It's about 240 on number one and 150 PSI for the rest of them. So that pretty much warrants a rebuild right there. I'm going to go ahead and rip this thing out of here. Got to figure out how I'm going to do that. Got to get the hood off and then uh, I really don't know any good spots to lift this from. We'll get it out of here, get some new rings in it, some new bearings, uh, new head gasket, new all that stuff. I'm going to clean it up real nice. I might put new pistons in it depending on what they look like. I do want to get it out first to see what I need to replace and then uh, we'll go from there. First order of business is figuring out where I can get a couple of engine lift points on this thing. I'm thinking maybe this exhaust manifold bolt that didn't really seem that strong though there's really not much to hook it to i just have to figure something out i guess but yeah i'll do that i gotta take all the accessories off get the starter off um power steering pump fan get the radiator out unhook the oil cooler lines this thing's still full of oil it's kind of unfortunate brand new diesel oil i can't reuse i don't know i'll find a use for it but i gotta figure out how to get this thing out first Got a bunch of stuff taken apart. No radiator, no fan, no belts, no cover, no starter. Uh, oil lines are unhooked. Power steering pump is unhooked. Um, all I gotta do, oh, diesel lines are unhooked. All I gotta do is uh, undo the motor mounts and the bell housing bolts and get it strapped up and pull it out. I think I'm gonna use this bolt right here in the power steering pump. And then there's an open port in the head right there I can screw something into. And uh, hopefully it'll be semi-level so I can pull it out. All right, well, I'm going to get this thing on the stand and I'll start tearing it apart here in a couple hours. Got a pretty late start today because I was getting this piece. It's a 10 millimeter Allen to a socket. I thought I had one, couldn't find it. I had to go get one. So taking the head off special sequence to take it off and put it on so to put it on it starts one here and ends over here when you're taking it off you want to do reverse that so start here and end over there so uh, i'm going to take that off and we'll see what's going on underneath it i already loosened all the bolts so i'm just going to impact the rest of them out Okay, got the head off. Doesn't look the greatest in there, but I think a nice hone and some new piston rings. It should be pretty good. Uh, this one, this piston looks to have a few dents down there at the bottom. Uh, I really, I might get brand new pistons for it. We'll see. Uh, I want to get them out and then I'll be able to make that judgment. Got all the pistons out. Mm, what's that? Ooh, that's a number two compression ring. On uh, number three cylinder, it's broken. Number four cylinder, also broken. Number two was just filled with rust. So like, that explains that pretty bad. Number one, number one actually had okay compression. It was like, I think it was like 250 or something like that. Like much better than the other ones that were all in the 150 range. I think number one has a seized number one compression ring, so that would explain it not being full, but I think the number two compression ring made up for it at least. 
Look at how beefy these rods are. These things are tanks. Super beefy. The pistons don't even look that bad. Now they're dirty, but there's not a significant amount of wear on them or heat marks or anything. This one's pretty messed up, but I think if I soak it and clean it, it's actually gonna come out pretty decent. It never ran like this. I think it just spun over like this. So it was never moving super fast. The crank is super smooth. The noise you're hearing is this piece on the flywheel. Yeah, so I don't think I'm gonna replace the crank bearings. I'm gonna seal this thing back up and uh, I'm gonna hone it really good. I think a really good hone and some new piston rings and this thing will be back in business. I'm also going to lap the valves on this and uh, clean it all up. So it'll be totally refreshed. All right, I'm actually going to lap the valves. So I'm gonna do it with the drill. There's a lot of videos how to do it, but basically what you do is get some valve lapping compound, valve grinding compound, see? And put a little bit on the valve, put a little bit valve seat here, and then uh, put it in there, attach your drill on the other side, and pull it through and spin it. And it should basically grind a perfectly mated surface between the two. Um, this might not be needed, but it'll probably be all right. So I'm going to do that on all eight of them, and the head will be pretty much ready to put back together. Hopefully, hopefully you can see on the valve, that bottom part, it's all nice and shiny. That's pretty much what lapping the valves does. So it's perfectly, basically machined to the valve seat. So did that on all of them. This one's a little bit dirty, but it's also got that ring around it. Super nice. So this thing should seal up pretty good. I'm going to spray it with some carb clean and clean up all of that grinding compound. It's basically just sand, gel kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm going to clean all that from the head and put it back together. Got all of the pistons cleaned up. But piston number three looks like this. And I hope you guys can see that. There is a crack right at the end of my thumb. Yeah, this thing ate something. That's why it's all dinged up. All the other pistons look all right though. This one just has a crack. So, man, this thing just keeps getting worse. All right, so I pretty much just ordered four new pistons and new uh, wrist pins for it. Okay, just got these brand new pistons here. Look at that, brand new, no cracks. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I showed you guys, but where is it? this one's got a nice, nice crack right there in it. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and get these in there today. It's like 6.30, so I got maybe an hour of daylight. I got new rods, or new uh, rod bearings to go on. And uh, I'm gonna clean up the block a little bit just because I've been spraying it with WD 40 so it doesn't rust. And uh, hopefully, I can get those things in today. It's just getting dark here, got all the pistons in. Tomorrow, I'm gonna put the head on and hopefully get it all together. And uh, I might even get it in the car tomorrow. But uh, yeah, pistons went in pretty easy. See all the arrows facing forward, it's all nice and uh, oiled up. New rod bearings on there, new rings, and uh, yeah, this thing's gonna be sweet. All right, got the engine in last night. Uh, all I gotta do is put some oil in it, put some water in it, and uh, I'm gonna bleed the fuel system. So I'm gonna hook my power bleeder to the return 
and just pull a bunch of fuel out of it to get it all through the filter and stuff. And then uh, I think we'll start it. Hopefully it starts. running runs pretty good uh, apart from a few I mean actually all these injectors leak a little bit so I'm gonna have to take this apart to tighten them up and do all that uh, this injector line leaks it has a crack in it so I got to take that out and weld that up um, what else we got power steering works but leaks so you know there's a bunch of stuff to do on it but it's actually running pretty good all the gauges work uh, I still got to hook up the tack but I don't really think that's gonna work because it's a diesel to a gas tack, but I'll, I'll hook it up and see what happens. Um, it's got oil pressure. Pretty much everything's working right now. I gotta do a little cold start on the LS1 today. I really don't drive it that much, especially when gas is uh, like $5 a gallon here. Let's see. It's been having a battery problem for some reason. Uh, I think it's just a bad battery. It's like a having some sort of parasitic draw, but I don't really think it is. Uh, see, there you go. That's interesting. It says it's very warm, but it's not. See, weird, I don't know why it's doing that. It's probably from when it was underwater. Like, that's why my oil pressure gauge is like that. I hope. But, uh, Still starts up, so I'm gonna move it. Cold start on the diesel is a bit more interesting because because it has a slight injector leak. So if it sits for a long time, uh, the it gets air in the system. So that's a kind of a hard time starting in the morning, but about 40 degrees 45 degrees out here and uh, we'll give it a shot kicks out quite a bit of white smoke and yeah it's because these injectors leak just a little bit so you can see two and three especially leak a bit and then the other ones are, are pretty tight but it gets a little bit of air in the system so it's totally cold right now and uh, let me put you on the tripod and we can start it up all right it likes a lot of glow plug so see what, see what it's got misfiring a little bit because it's cold and has a little bit of air in the lines but it's good enough to drive you can see it kicked out some white smoke but uh you could you could probably hear it on camera pretty good how it was misfiring for a little bit that's just because there's air in the lines i think i might pick up some new injectors 
um, and slap those things in there and see if that helps it at all. Or buy some sort of uh, rebuild kit for the injectors, I might do that too. Because uh, these are good OEM ones. I'm gonna take it for a drive and uh, hopefully I can get some rolling shots. All right, let's see if this camera view works at all. I get to figure out why it died. Stay tuned. All right, well, I'm pretty sure what happened is that uh, my battery came loose a little bit. So it, it was uh, not, not giving it enough fuel because it kept cutting the uh, fuel cutoff on and off. So I think that's what happened. Now it's working.
gonna need to get towed home. All right guys, thank you for watching. I think that's gonna be it for this video. Got the 4055 swapped Raider up and running and it runs and drives pretty good. Apart from that uh, stalling issue that I actually think is probably gonna be the fuel filter. Um, just because this thing hasn't, this Raider hasn't run in so long, the tank's probably pretty gummed up with stuff. So I'm gonna check the fuel filter. I'll probably buy a new one, they're like five bucks. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. So make sure you like and subscribe. And I'm gonna put my Instagram in the description. So check that out. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.